This conference will now be recorded. We're going to go ahead and start recording this, and it will be made available uh, later today on the Whatcom County Health Department's website at www.whatcomcounty.us slash COVID, and it will also be available on the Whatcom County Government's YouTube channel. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Erica. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, good morning, everyone. As you uh, probably know, the governor had a press conference on Friday afternoon and laid out the next steps in reopening our economy and uh, relaxing some of the current restrictions under the stay home, stay healthy order. That order expired at midnight last night and in its place, there are options for counties to move to a modified phase one or to move to a phase two. Whatcom County under the new rules for uh, movement to phase two is eligible. And uh, there are a number of different metrics that allow us to become eligible, but the, the most important one that, uh, that we have been talking about is that, that uh, case count per 100,000. Uh, the, new, the new requirement to move to phase two uh, under the, uh, the reopening with the, the governor's new order is uh, to reach under 25 cases per 100,000 over the past four days. Subsequent to the press conference, uh, uh, less than 24 hours ago, uh, yesterday afternoon, the health department received uh, new application materials. We were finalizing the, uh, the variance application based on the information that we had from last week. And the application to move to phase two uh, that we received yesterday was, uh, had some significant differences to the point where we were not able to complete those documents in time for the 10 a.m. Special Health Board County Council meeting where they would vote to um, approve the application and uh, move forward. So our intention is to have those documents completed this afternoon, send to the health board as well as the executive who are both required to sign off. Uh, the health board is required to uh, vote by a majority to approve the application. And then the uh, county executive is required to uh, have a um, assigned statement of approval and send to the Secretary of Health. So that will occur tomorrow. The County Council already has a regularly scheduled meeting tomorrow at 11, I believe, or 1130. And they plan to convene as a health board uh, and then take that vote and then move it on to the executive tomorrow. So uh, we, we were really disappointed that we couldn't make this happen today. Uh, but it was a significant body of work and we wanted to make sure that we had the strongest application possible to move to phase two and uh, having a few more hours will allow us to do that. So not only will we send the completed application to uh, the council and to elected officials, we will also make that public. So that will also be available to the media this afternoon once it's complete. And that will provide a lot more information uh, but I can walk through what we know about the metrics and where we are in, in reaching those metrics. And then, of course, there will be uh, many, many more pages and much, much more detail and information in the final documents. So there are some key metrics that the governor laid out on Friday. And, uh, and the first, like I mentioned, was that target number of cases. And the target is to be under 25 cases per 100,000 over 14 days. And Whatcom County, we used the two week period of, the, uh, of May 16th to May 30th, which was Saturday uh, to determine. And that did include, um, one of the council members this morning asked if it did include that 10 new cases and it did. And we're still under the threshold of 25. We, that two week period revealed that we were at 15.6 per 100,000 over 14 days. And I think uh, that can be sort of a, a cumbersome and confusing metric. I think the most uh, 
the most sort of practical and easy metric is our goal in 20 and what equates to 25 per 100,000 over 14 days is to be uh, below an average of four new cases a day. So uh, that's just an easy way to determine. Um, and we, we, have, we have reached that consistently. There have been a few spikes over the last week, uh, but we also saw that there were zero cases yesterday. So we continue to monitor, monitor that, but we are at 15.6 per 100,000 or 2.5 average cases per day. The, uh, the second metric is trends in hospitalizations for lab confirmed COVID cases. And uh, that's obviously a hospital metric. And uh, the target is to be flat or decreasing. And we are seeing decreases in, um, in hospitalizations due to COVID. And that, uh, that graph will be available this afternoon as well. So you can see that by week. Uh, next, in terms of um, healthcare system readiness, so this is also uh, hospital data. And in our case, we have one hospital. So this is Peace Health data. And uh, there's a target to, uh, to be under 80% uh, of licensed beds occupied by patients in order to allow for potential surges in medical care and treatment. And Peace Health is currently at 79.4. So they are below that metric. Uh, the other Peace Health metric is um, a target of uh, less than 10% of licensed beds occupied by, by suspected and confirmed COVID-19 cases. And at this point, over the period um, requested for Peace Health, they're at 1.5%, so far below that 10% target. In terms of testing, the, uh, the average um, the average number of tests performed per day during the past week um, it, and, and the uh, target of 2% uh, of all tests being positive, we are at 3.4%. Uh, and this is a ideal target. So we do not believe that being above that 2% threshold uh, damages our, um, our application to move to phase two. We also mm -hmm. recognize that there are, uh, there are data discrepancies, excuse me, not data discrepancies, but there are data delays between the time of the test and when that gets inputted in the state system. And there are hundreds of negative tests that we know that have not been inputted into the state system, which is the metric that we're, we're relying this data on. And we did explain that in, in our application as well. And the state is aware that there is that lag time. Uh, and most likely that number would come down with the, uh, the input of all of those additional negative cases. Uh, the, the second testing metric is uh, the medium time, median time from symptom onset to specimen collection among cases during the past week. And uh, our data indicates that um, the target is a median of less than two days and our, and our actual is one day. So we are, we are meeting that target as well. And then in terms of case and contact investigations, uh, the percent of cases reached by phone or in person uh, within 24 hours of receipt of a positive lab test, the target is at 90% and Whatcom County is at 94%. So we are reaching almost everyone who has a positive case. And uh, the, the period that we were looking at was over four weeks and um, there were 83 positive cases and we were able to reach 94% of those. And then, there were, uh, then there's also a target of 80% for the percent of contacts reached uh, by phone or in person within 48 hours of receipt of positive lab report of a case. So that is through those case and contact investigations that we're able to identify uh, who a uh, positive case has, has potentially exposed or has had close contact with. And that target is 80%. And currently we, we are at 70% um, of the 430. But again, this is a um, this is an ideal target, um, not a hard and steady target. And we are uh, we are expending additional energy, and we are hiring on 
uh, more case and contact investigators, um, both from, uh, from other departments within Whatcom County um, who are being lent for a period of time to us. And we also have uh, 25 volunteers in the hopper that we are interviewing and, um, and a good portion will probably bring on in order to help us with this work so we can continue to see increases in that percentage. We also yesterday received, and I this is this is part of the the data that we're pulling today. But we also um, received just yesterday new metrics, um, new to us, new to all local health jurisdictions. That there is an expectation that we um, are contacting 80% of people daily by phone or electronically during their isolation period, and that we are uh, contacting. Uh, 80% of those, of those contacts being um, checked in daily during their quarantine period. So we are working to, um, to identify that data to provide uh, for the state as well. And then the last is um, protecting high-risk populations. And this, this is really about our, um, our outbreaks in, uh, in workplace congregate living or institutional settings. And the target for uh, medium counties, which are 75, thousand to 300,000 of which Whatcom County is one, is, uh, is, one, um, is one outbreak, uh, one active outbreak. And we do have one active outbreak. Um, so we are meeting that target. We always shoot to be at zero, uh, but we are, we are working very closely um, on that particular outbreak um, with the, uh, the employees and the, and the employer. So uh, with that, Again, there will be a lot more information provided in our final packet of information, uh, but I'm happy to uh, answer any initial questions that you have regarding what I shared or other questions. Thank you, Erica. We've gone ahead and opened up the chat feature. And at this time, we'll invite members of the media to type in your name and affiliation, and we will call on you to ask your questions. Our first question is from Key Relia with the Bellingham Herald. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, Erica, can you, um, maybe you referenced it, but I was curious about the, um, what may have been behind the recent increase in cases we've had. You mentioned the 10. Um, and then, uh, so I didn't know if that was really, related to the one outbreak we have, but what can you tell me about those new cases and also uh, where this outbreak is? Thank you. Sure. Uh, the, the bulk of those new cases I did confirm this morning is associated with the, um, not only the, uh, the employees of, um, of, the, uh, of the facility, but also their close contacts. So it is most of those are related to uh, that particular outbreak that we're investigating and working with the employer on. Thanks, Erica. Our next mm -hmm. question is from Denver Pratt with the Bellingham Herald. Denver, go ahead. Oh, hi, can you hear me? Sorry. No. Okay, yes. perfect. Um, so I know that there's a, a backlog of um, negative cases, and I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit why, about why that's impacting Whatcom so heavily. Mm -hmm. And then my second question is, mm -hmm. can you tell us where this outbreak is occurring and what type of a facility it is? Thank you. Okay. Uh, so um, this really has to do with um, sort of the back end systems not communicating well. Um, this is a problem for both Whatcom and Skagit County and um, and Skagit County in their variance application on Friday referenced this as well. Northwest Labs uh, is is at this point um, not able to electronically file their their results to the state and so we we literally have, a public health nurse spending uh, half their day 
receiving faxes, paper faxes, uh, in order to, to input into the system. And, um, and there's a lag between uh, that input and the state, um, the state recognizing those numbers. So it's a, it's a back-end system that we're working with the state to address. And, um, and we've received assurances that that would be, that would be very soon. So it's, it's just been, um, it's been a challenge for the systems to communicate. Uh, and then your question about the outbreak. Um, the outbreak is a um, is a processing facility. I cannot provide the name of the facility because uh, the employer has not given consent. And obviously, it's really important for us as we're doing this investigative work to have uh, trust in a relationship with the employer to ensure uh, access and um, and influence in uh, in best practices. So, because the employer has not given consent, um, we we cannot reveal the name. And I know that in the past, uh, when we've had outbreaks, they've been at long-term care facilities, and they've been very open about about sharing uh, information about what's happening. And um, and in this case, that that is not the case. So we we would not reveal that. Our next question is from Tom Bands with Northwest NPR. Tom, go ahead. Tom, if you're with us, your microphone may be muted. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, yes, I unmuted myself there. Thank you. A couple questions about the fishing trawler investigation. To what extent is a Whatcom County part of the investigation of, of that outbreak? And secondly, are you surprised at all, given all the preventive measures uh, American Seafoods took before setting sail that they still uh, had a COVID uh, outbreak? Yeah, uh, this, has been, uh, this has been actually a very good exercise for uh, the health department and our partners and other local health jurisdictions, because there are a lot of jurisdictions involved in this. We've engaged with the state, the CDC is involved, the Coast Guard is involved, the employer, King County and Whatcom County. And uh, it's been a good exercise for us to understand roles and responsibilities, given that there, there are so many jurisdictions involved. And for Whatcom County, um, our, primary, our primary goal was ensuring that, uh, that there was um, no or little exposure to Whatcom County residents or the business uh, where this vessel was docked. And we were able to do an investigation in that way. And we, we do not believe there are any exposures in Whatcom County. Uh, we also worked cooperatively with the Coast Guard and the employer um, on, on making sure that uh, the, the employees on the vessel did not exit the vessel uh, until we knew more and uh, they were able to get tested. But King County had already set up great systems with the employer. They had, uh, they had a testing site that they had already identified that was able to come up on Saturday morning and, and test folks. Uh, so that was already set up and King County also uh, had systems in place to ensure that isolation and quarantine were available to those individuals. And so, uh, so we, we worked collaboratively with all of those partners, um, but, but really first and foremost was to ensure that there weren't exposures locally. And we were able to, we were able to, um, to uh, reach the conclusion that there were not exposures locally. Um, we, we have been really impressed with the employer and how many systems they had put in place. And I think um, this is just a, a really interesting case about um, from a public health perspective because all of the, all of the employees on that vessel um, received pre-employment testing and, and they all tested negative when they, when they entered the boat on May 14th. And, um, and now I think two thirds are positive. So it's a testament to um, the, uh, the challenges in, um, in testing and that testing is only, um, is only accurate when the viral load is high enough to detect it. And, um, and it does not ensure uh, that people are not exposed. And it also, um, it, it's also a testament to 
how, uh, how infectious this disease is in close quarters and sustained contact. Thank you. Our next question is from Oliver Lazenby with the Northern Light. Oliver, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, I wanted to actually follow up quickly on Tom Bonzi's question. Um, is is that is was there a way that the employees on that vessel could have uh, become infected oh, elsewhere? I know you said they were pre-tested. Um, and my other question is: um, Is there a plan for um, health inspectors to check out restaurants or other businesses that would have to modify their operations for a phase two opening? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the first question about the vessel, um, you know, I I don't have access to the um, to the specific route they took, but my understanding was they were off the coast that entire time uh, fishing. Um, and I, I don't know if they they touched down in in any specific um, location before Bellingham, um, but um, that that would be a level of detail I don't have. Uh, the um, the second question about about restaurants reopening, um, you may remember that our public health advisory board uh, has initiated a. Um, a task force on employer support and uh, restaurants, bars, and nightclubs are one of the sectors with um, that that we're working to to finalize some guidance and um, and provide technical support um, through our subject matter experts uh, as well as its peer to peer support and buy in from uh, from all of these businesses. But um, we are we are working with uh, restaurants specifically from two different lenses, uh, both through the, um, the business to business support and also from our subject matter experts. So yes, we are working very closely with, with restaurants. Thank you. Next question is from Key Relia with the Bellingham Herald. Key, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, two questions for you, Erica. The, uh, in the case of the trawler, uh, are any of those positive cases, would they be counted as Whatcom County cases or would it be King County cases? And then also I wanted to ask you about um, uh, what uh, Whatcom County is doing or what your role is in Governor Jay Inslee's um, directive to test uh, all the residents and uh, employees at uh, nursing homes and assisted living facilities with memory care. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So with regard to the second question, uh, the state is working directly with all the facilities and uh, they are sending test kits to the facilities. They are uh, they have contracted with two different testing uh, testing um, uh, sites to um, to allow those specimens to be tested. So they are working directly. Our role as a health department is really to um, to we've been communicating every day with the facilities, making sure that they uh, because they will be doing their own testing, the health department is not responsible for doing the testing ourselves. So because they will be doing that, we are sending them information about, um, about how to collect a sample with integrity and, uh, and make sure that, um, that they have the support they need, um, absent the health department having to go out to all of these sites ourselves, but we're giving them support in that way. So they, um, so they feel like they can do this and the state is trying to make it um, as streamlined as possible by sending the the, the uh, test kits and by um, by you know it not just um, not only paying for the the testing but also um, also having uh, direct routes for these facilities to send tests. So that's our role. Uh, the first question on um, on the trawler. Oh, how how are these cases attributed? Uh, none of the cases are going to be attributed to. Uh, Whatcom County, and I think the only exception might be if there is a case uh, of a Whatcom County resident, but I would have to confirm that. Uh, these cases, this is again a 
sort of a, um, a complicated jurisdictional issue as well. And um, but we did receive from the state that uh, the cases in general will not be attributed to um, to Whatcom County, including the case of the individual on the vessel that was transported to Peace Health. Uh, that person's residence is not in Whatcom County, and the exposure was not in Whatcom County. Uh, so, so we're working off that assumption that, um, and and received from the secretary over the weekend that that's uh, that that these will not these 85 cases will not be attributed to Whatcom County. Our next question is from Denver Pratt with the Bellingham Herald. Denver, go ahead. Hi, thanks, Erica. I just have a couple of questions for you. Um, can you tell us how many people have tested positive in the outbreak at the supply facility? And can you also tell us whether or not that's impacting our local food supply chain? And then my second question is, I know that the um, State Department of Health is providing contact tracers and investigators for some of the counties that you know are looking to hire more people. And I was wondering if some of those people from the state are coming here to help in Whatcom County. Thank you. Yeah, at this time, we, we have not asked uh, additional contact investigators to um, to come in Whatcom County. Um, they they will be uh, located physically in, I believe in Tumwater. And our preference at this point, unless we, we find we don't have the capacity, our preference is to, um, to find uh, local folks who can, who can help with this work. Uh, so, uh, so we are working off the assumption that we will be able to support the case and contact investigations locally. Uh, but it is great to have that resource if we need it. Uh, and then the question about the outbreak, I couldn't tell you, um, I, I could not give you an exact number right now, uh, how many of those cases. And like I said, some of them were um, were employees and some of them were contacts of, of those employees. So I, I don't have an exact number for you. Um, and as far as I know, the, um, uh, the this is not affecting the local food supply. But Melissa, do you have any do you have any more details about that? I don't have any more details. Um, okay. uh, Denver, we can follow up with our um, investigation team to find out more possibly. And I don't believe, um, as Erica said, that there are has been any impact that we're aware of to the local food supply chain. Looks like our next question is from David Rosbach with the Herald. Dave, go ahead. Hi, Erica. Uh, this is a question regarding uh, yesterday. I noticed that the death total in the county is reduced by three. Uh, released yesterday that it reduced uh, by one, the one that was reported on Tuesday. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the delay in uh, reporting those uh, what, what's what, you know what's taking so long to determine whether it's um, of you know if it's somebody who's tested positive for COVID-19 or some or a death that is related to that and and kind of the process behind that and and now we're uh, reporting six fewer deaths than the state is and, and which number Whatcom County residents should uh, should basically trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this gets um, complicated and confusing as well. So, um, and I, I described this to the county council this morning. The the discrepancy and when those numbers do change and when they reduce, I know that this happened um, a few weeks ago where we had um, we had a certain number of cases and then it was reduced by one. So, with uh, with standard death investigations, there is uh, there is um, a pretty comprehensive look at primary cause of death. And um, it is entirely possible that uh, because, uh, because an individual tested positive, either uh, pre or post-mortem for COVID, that that initially was, uh, was indicated as the, the cause of death uh, related to COVID. Uh, but in some of these cases, the individual might um, already be in hospice 
or an unrelated illness um, or, or is uh, very sick and terminal with another illness. And so it, it's through the death investigation process that we're able to identify, was COVID the most significant contributing factor or AKA primary cause of death for, um, for that individual or did they die of something else but happen to be tested positive for COVID? So it's a reconciliation process uh, that that happens um, that happens with with every death, and uh, when when there are when there are multiple um, I should say comorbidities, right? When there's multiple potential options, and so this is just a reconciliation process. In regards to the differences between the um, the state numbers and the county numbers, I would have to talk to our data folks about um, the the explanation behind that. This is Melissa with the health department. Um, just to add to what Erica described, um, thus far there, we have been using a slightly different definition than the state. And I believe the state is in the process of moving to a new definition. And the information we had from our data team this morning indicated that that process is not yet complete. And that um, that is, I think, affecting the numbers that we are reporting versus the numbers that they are reporting. The other thing I'll add um, is that the, the process of determining final cause of death and reconciling this data happens regularly. Um, and that this process, because we are reporting this information real time, is demonstrating the complexities that go into that kind of reporting. This is all work that we are we are always doing behind Scenes. And it's just been complicated by the fact that we're now trying to report this information in a much more real time way. Thanks, Melissa. It looks like we have another question from Oliver Lazenby with the Northern Lights. Oliver, go ahead. Thanks, Erica. Um, I uh, apologize if this comes out later this afternoon, but could you give a few examples of what the new phase two application you received yesterday requires or how it was different from the previous application just why it couldn't be finished this morning yeah sure uh yes i have it right in front of me um the there was additional data required of the hospital uh that was that was one um challenge in terms of of getting that and, and coordinating with our partners um they've been very responsive and we have that information now uh, but of course you know um sunday at 2 p.m um finding uh finding partners and um and digging into systems etc um the uh there are four i think there's four new questions um entirely new sections um and there was a few that are significant. Um, one, I would just say um, that's really significant that will re that has required a lot of our data data staff time is um, providing a summary of the epidemiology of COVID in our county, including populations disproportionately affected by COVID-19 and proportion of cases without an epidemiological link to other cases. That has been a, a challenge for us to dig through. Um, and identify. So that body of work um, was significant. Um, uh, the um, the brand new requirements, uh, we um, we were not made aware that there would be a new requirement that we reach out to people in home isolation or quarantine daily on a daily basis. Um, this is not something that was um, that was a part of a system. Um, or a requirement in the past. So um, identifying how we can um, how we can continue to implement that and um, and reach the metrics of of uh, daily check-ins, um, recognizing that um, that there's new systems that would need to be put in place and trying to identify what that would look like. Um, the and then there's the um, a, a lot more information about. Um, about outbreaks, um, including um, a number of outbreaks, facility name, uh, type using an outbreak definition um, uh, of that two or more non-household cases, um, 
So just digging in on all of those outbreaks um, over the last four weeks um, and, and making sure that we have that data uh, um, well positioned and complete. And then also um, a question about um, a new question, if COVID-19 is disproportionately affecting low-income communities or communities of color in your county, what are your plans to protect these populations? So I think this is a, this is a, obviously something that the health department is focused on. We, we are reporting um, data by race and ethnicity as of a few weeks ago. Uh, so we are tracking that, we're looking at that. We know that there's disproportionality in, in how this is impacting communities and, um, and further developing plans for how we will continue to address that. As we pivot from uh, crisis management, um, which we've kind of been in for the last three months to really, um, being able to take a step back, doing more planning, being more more proactive rather than just reacting to um, the constant onslaught of of um, information cases, um, outbreaks, and issues. We have another question from Tom Bonsi with uh, NPR. Tom, go ahead. Hi, thank you. One more more quick question on the trawler situation. Did the um, captain or, or the crew suspect a COVID-19 outbreak before they pulled into port in Bellingham, or did this happen more while in port uh, beginning later on Thursday? We know that the individual who was transported to Peace Health um, had been sick for a period of time, but no one was no one was tested on board, so that was not a confirmed case until after intake at Peace Health. Um, we don't I don't know the status of how many others were symptomatic um, on board, um, but uh, you know that's that's something that King County is going to be working through uh, with the employer and um, and yeah I, do, I don't have that additional information. Okay, yeah, just to maybe follow up, you spoke of being fairly confident that the um, COVID-19 didn't uh, jump to shore from this ship, but is that because they were taking precautions from the moment they tied up at the dock or or for some yes. other reason? Yes, uh, the, the individual who had symptoms uh, was transported securely um, using a facility that's COVID prepared and ready. Um, and used the universal precautions, and um, and the uh, the transport of of goods um, uh, required no no direct contact between um, the the place where they were docked and and the crew themselves. So um, so we know that those um, those factors really helped prevent any local exposure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Denver Pratt with the Bellingham Herald. Denver, go ahead. Hi, yeah, just a quick question. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us uh, a little bit about what you found in terms of populations that are being disproportionately affected here as you were kind of putting together the data that was needed to move to phase two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, you know what? That is that's actually data that we uh, that we are working on now. I don't have a I don't have a draft or a final of that information because that was one of the new questions. Um, but that will be included in in the uh, document that we send this afternoon, so we can give you more information then. It looks like we do not have any additional questions in the chat. So with that, we will end this briefing for today. Thank you all for attending. And again, a recording of this will be made available later today at the Whatcom County Government's YouTube channel and also at www.whatcomcounty.us slash COVID. Thank you.